Since now I shall be taken from you, I, Henry V, King of France and England, render thanks to God that he calls me when I am of perfect remembrance. This I say, my brethren and loving friends, if you love me, you ought to love my child, not for his desert, but for mine. I charge you all to render your allegiance unto my son, King Henry VI. As touching the estate of my realm, I command you to love and join together in one league and one unfeigned amity. I will that my brother Humphrey shall be protector of England during the minority of my child. And I command Lord Talbot with fire and sword to persecute Charles, calling himself Dauphin, to expel him utterly from our realm of France. What I have gotten, I charge you keep it. I command you defend it. And I desire you to nourish it.
Then suffer, say, if I maintain the truth, or else was wrangling Somerset in the air. Be <laughs> the truth in the law, I never yet could bend my will to it, and therefore bend the law unto my will. Judge you, my lord of work, that between us. Oh, in all these nice, sharp quillets of the law of good faith, I am no wiser than a dog. Since you are contact, and so loath to speak, in dumb significance, proclaim your thoughts. Let him that is a true-born gentleman, if he suppose that I have pleaded truth, from off this briar, pluck a white rose with me. Let him that is no coward, nor no flatterer, but dare maintain the party of the truth, and pluck a red rose from off this thorn with me. I love no colour, and without all colour of base, insinuating flattery. I pluck this white rose with Plantagenet. <laughs> I pluck a red rose with young Somerset here, and say with all, I think he held the right. Say, lords and gentlemen, and pluck no more, until you conclude that he upon whose side the fewest roses are from the tree shall yield the other in the right opinion. Well, good Master Vernon, it is well objected. If I have fewest, I subscribe in silence. And I. Then, for the truth and plainness of the case, I pluck this tail and gain the last of it, giving my bonnet on the white rose. Trick not your finger as you pluck it off, lest the bleeding do paint the white rose red and full. Ah, ah, so against your will. Now, Somerset, where is your argument? Yeah. In my scabbard, meditating that shall dye your white rose and bleeding red. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, your cheeks to counterfeit our roses. Prepare then up with fear, as we can say the truth on our side. No, 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 Thou great this maiden, blushing rose in my hand, I scorn thee and thy faction, English boy. Away, away, we grace the yeoman by conversing with him. Now by God's will thou roast it, Somerset. His grandfather was lying, Duke of Clarence, third son to the third Edward, King of England. Spring restless yeoman from so deep a root. Was not thy father, Richard, Duke of York, for treason? Executed in our late king's day, and by his treason, standards not thou attainted. My father was a tax not attainted, condemned to die for treason, but no treasure! And I'll prove that on better men than sunset! Look at what I said, you are well born. Oh, thou shalt find us ready for thee still. And know us by these colours thy foes, for these, my friends, in spite of thee shall wear. And by my soul, this pale and angry rose, as cognizant of my blood drinking hate, will I forever in my faction wear, and it will it with me to my grave, or flourish to the height of my degree. Go and be choked with thy ambition, and so farewell until I see thee next. i with thee, suffer. Farewell, ambitious York. <laughs> oh, I am brave, and must perforce endure it. Now, I can begin to satisfy myself by craving your opinion of my title, which is infallible to England's Crap. Sweet York, begin. And if thy claim be good, then war it is thy subject to command. I claim my right by birth and parentage. For by my mother I derive the land from Lionel, Duke of Clarence, the third son to King Edward III, while Henry, from John of Gorge, doth trace his pedigree being but four of that heroic line. So, if the issue of the elder son succeed before the younger, I am king. What plain proceedings is more plain than this? Henry doth claim the crown from John of Gaunt, the fourth son, your claims it from the third. And so in signal of my love to thee, will I upon thy party wear this rose? My heart assures me that the Earl of Warwick shall one day make the Duke of York a king. Warwick, this I do assure myself. Richard shall live to make the Earl of Warwick the greatest man in England but king. <laughs> and here I prophesy this brawl today, go to the Saxon in this temple garden, shall one day send between the red rose and the white a thousand souls to death and deadly knives. Come, let's enter dinner. 
I dare say this quarrel will drink blood another day. Stay, sir. Dost thou maintain the former words thou spakest against my lord, the Duke of Somerset, Sirrah, that lord I honour as he is? Why? What is he? As good a man as your cock, ye not so. Witness, did ye that? I'll to his majesty and crave I may have liberty to avenge this wrong. But now shall see. I'll meet thee to thy cost. Well, Mr. Andrew, I'll be there as soon as you would have to meet you. Sooner than you would. Presumptuous battles, are you not ashamed? 
with this immodest, clamorous outrage to trouble and disturb the king and us. And you, my lord, methinks you do not well to bear with their perverse objections, much less to take occasion from their mouths to raise a mutiny betwixt yourselves. Let me persuade you, take a better course. It grieves his highness. Could my lord be friends? Let me be umpire in this doubtful strife. I see no reason if I declare this rose that anyone should therefore be suspicious. I'm more inclined to Somerset than York. Both are my kinsmen, and I love them both. Cousin of York, we institute your grace to be our regent in our realm of France. Why? And good my lord Somerset, unite your troops of horsemen with his bands of foot. Go no, cheerfully no. together <laughs> and digest your angry collar on no, our enemies. Dissension prone betwixt the peers burns under painted ashes of forged love, and will in time break out into a flame. Now I fear that fatal prophecy, which in the time of Henry V was in the mouth of every sucking babe, that Henry, born of one month, should win all, and Henry, born of Windsor, should lose all. Which is so plain, Exeter doth wish his days may finish ere that hapless time. Open the gates of Paris! <clears throat> Summon the general under the wall. Ah! <laughs> 
my promised supply of horsemen that were levied for the siege. And now that Talbot doth expect my age, and I am routed like a traitor villain, and cannot help the noble chevalier. God help him now in this necessity. Thou princely leader of our English strength, spurred to the rescue of noble Talbot, who is now girdled with a waist of iron and headed about with grim destruction. Oh, God, that Somerset, to end the proud heart, denies my horsemen were in Talbot's place. Then might we save a noble gentleman by forfeiting a traitor and a coward. Send some succor to the distressed lord. He dies. We lose. I break my warlike word. We mourn France smiles. We lose. They daily get a lot of his foul traitor Somerset. May God take mercy on brave Talbot's soul. And on his son, young John, who two hours since I have been in trouble toward his warlike father. The seven years did not Talbot see his son, now they meet, for both their lives are done. Excellent farewell. No more my fortune can, but curse the cause, I cannot help the man. Main Poitier, Bois, and Tours, the one away, the whole of Somerset and his delay. Thus, while the vulture of sedition feeds in the bosom of such great commanders, sleeping their collections up betrayed to loss the conquest our scarce cold conqueror, the ever living man of memory, whilst they each other cross lives, honors, lands, and all hurry to loss.
is my other life. <laughs> my other is gone. Dizzy-eyed fury and great rage of heart suddenly made him from my side to start. It was a costly battle of a Frankie, and in that sea of blood my boy did drench his overmounting spirit. And thereby, my Icarus, my blossom, and his pride. Oh, where is young Talbot? Where is Valley? Triumphant death, smeared with captivity, young Talbot's valor makes me smile at thee. Oh, thou, whose wounds become hard for death, speak to thy father, O thou little boy. My spirit can no longer bear these horns. Soldiers, adieu. I have what I would have. Now my old arms are young John Talbot's grave. <laughs> Treason's lurk. 
So listen, Henry, with her wondrous praise, that may bereave him of his wits with wonder, for so my fancy shall be satisfied, and peace established between these realms. Margaret shall be queen and rule the king, but I will rule both her, the king, and realm. <laughs> to have a godly peace concluded of between the realms of England and of France. But that's your grace of heck motion. Well, my lord, and as the only means to stop effusion of our Christian blood. Oh, marry, uncle, for I always thought it was both impious and unnatural that such a vanity and bloody strife should rule among professors of one faith. <laughs> you are a wondrous rare description, noble earl, of beauteous market at us. Me. And once more she is not so divine, so full, replete with choice of all delights, but with the humble lowliness of mind she is content to be at your command. Men I mean a virtuous chaste intents to love and honor Henry as her lord. Otherwise should Henry ne'er pursue. Therefore, my lord protector, give consent that Margaret may be England's royal queen. So should I give consent to the plan of sin? You know, my lord, your highness is betrothed unto another lady of esteem. How shall we then dispense with that contract? As doth a ruler face your honor with reproach. As doth a ruler with unlawful oaths, which therefore may be broke without offense. A poor earl's daughter is unequal of. Why, what I pray is Margaret more than that. Oh, yes, my lord. Her father is a king, the king of Naples and Jerusalem, and of such great authority in France that his alliance will confirm our peace and keep the Frenchmen in allegiance. Can you, my lord, and you conclude with me that Margaret may be England's royal queen. Go, sir, and bring her to our present straight, and you, good uncle, vanish all offense. <laughs> No kindness out of love than this kind kiss. Oh Lord, that lends me life. Lend <laughs> me a heart complete with thankfulness, for thou hast given me in this beauteous face a world of earthly blessings to my soul. If the uh, sympathy of love unite our hearts. Great King of England and my gracious Lord, the mutual conference that my mind hath had, by day, by night, waking and in my dreams, in courtly company or at my deeds. With you, mine elderly best sovereign, makes me the bolder to salute my king with ruder terms, such as my wit affords, and overjoy of a heart doth minister. Oh, her sight and ravish, but her grace in speech makes me from wondering how do we been joys, such as the fullness of my heart's content. Lords, with one cheerful voice, welcome my love. Long live oh, Queen Margaret, England's happiness. Here are the articles of contracted peace between our sovereign and the French King Charles for 18 months, concluded by consent. <clears throat> in Chris, it is agreed between the French King Charles and William de la Pole, Marcus of Suffolk, ambassador to Henry, King of England, that the said Henry shall espouse the Lady Margaret, daughter to René, uh, King of Naples, Sicilia, and Jerusalem, and crown her Queen of England. I that the Duchy of Anjou and the County of Maine shall be released and delivered unto the king her father. Uncle, how now? Pardon me, my lord, some sudden call hath struck me at the heart and dimmed mine eyes that I can read no further. Uh, Uncle of Winchester, I pray, read on. Uh, 
Item. It is further agreed between them that the Duchess of Anjou and Maine will be released and delivered to the king, her father. And she sent over of the king of England's own proper cost and charges without having any dowry. They please us well. Lord Marquis, kneel down. We here create thee the first Duke of Suffolk and gird thee with the sword. Cousin of York, we here discharge your grace from being regent in the parts of France till term of 18 months before expired. My lords, we thank you all for entertainment to my princely queen. Come, let us in and with all speed provide to see her quarry to be performed. State, to you, Duke Humphrey, must unload his grief. Your grief, the common grief of all the land. What did my brother Henry spend his youth, his valor, coin, and people in the wars to conquer France, his true inheritance? Have you yourselves, Somerset, York, and Warwick, received deep scars in France and Normandy to keep by strategy what Henry got? Or hath my uncle Bohus? And myself, with all the learned counsel of the realm, studied so long, debating to and fro how France and Frenchmen might be kept in awe. And shall these labors and these honors die? Our peers of England, shameful is this league, fatal this marriage, cancelling your fame, yeah. undoing all as all had never been. Why this passionate discourse, this duration for such argument? For France is ours, and we will keep. I am uncle, we will keep it if we can. But now it is impossible we should. Suffolk, the new main duke that rules the roost, gives away the Duchy of Anjou and Maine. Now I have done them that fight for all these counties, where the kings of Normandy. Suffolk's duke may he be suffocate, <laughs> that dims the honor of this warlike isle. And all our travail turns to this effect. After the slaughter of so many men that sold their bodies for their country's benefits, shall we at last conclude if eminent peace or worry quarry, and will see with grief the utter loss of all our realm of France. Never read but England's kings and what sons of gold and dowries with their wives, and our King Henry gives away his own to match with her who brings no advantage. She yeah. should have stayed in France and starved. I am Lord of Gloucester, now ye grow too hot. It was a pleasure of my lord the king. Come, oh, my lord of Winchester, I know your mind. Tis not my speeches that you do mislike, but tis my presence that doth trouble ye. Rancor will I come, and let in my face I see thy fury. If I longer stay, we shall begin our ancient bickerings. Lordings, farewell. And say when I am gone, I prophesy French will be lost now. So there goes our protector in the rain. No, to you that he is mine enemy, nay more, an enemy unto you all, and no great friend to the king, I fear. Consider, Lord, he is the next of blood, the heir apparent to the English crown, and what though the common people favor him, calling him Humphrey, the Duke of Gloucester, I fear me, Lord, for all this flattery loss, he will be found to be a dangerous protector. Why should he then protect our sovereign? He being of age to govern of himself. My cousin of Somerset, join ye with me. And all together with the Duke of Suffolk, and we will quickly bring Duke Humphrey up from his seat. This way to business will not work through that. Listen to the Duke of Suffolk presently. Yes. Cousin of York, the Humphrey's pride and greatness has placed the grief to us, yet let us watch the haughty cardinal. The cause shall be displaced, he'll be protected. For well, thou and I shall be protector, Warwick, despite Duke Humphrey and the Cardinal. Do you as I do in these dangerous days. Wink at the Duke of Suffolk's insolence, hope its pride at Somerset's ambition to lay half snared the shepherd of the flock, that virtuous prince, the good Duke Humphrey. It is that they seek, and they in seeking that shall find their deaths in your controversy. Mm -hmm. Lord, break off. I know your mind is full. Ah. 
Anjou and Maine are given to the French. Paris is lost. The state of Normandy stands on a tickle point. Now they are gone, cold news for me, for I had hopes of France. Even as I have of England's fertile soil. That fact concluded on the article that is brief. And Henry was well pleased to change two dukedoms for a duke's fair daughter. Well, I'll blame them all. What is to them? It is mine they give away and not their own. But they will come and I shall claim the crown. For that's the golden mark I seek to hit. Nor shall proud Lancaster usurp my rights, nor hold the, the scepter in his childish fist, nor wear the diamond upon his head, whose church like humour fits not for a crown. Till Henry suffered in the joys of love with his new bride and England's dear bought queen, and Humphrey with the peers be fallen at jars. Then shall I raise aloft the milk white rose with whose sweet smell the air shall be but humid, and in my standard bear the arms of York to grapple with the house of Lancaster. Force, per force, I'll make him here the crown whose bookish rule hath pulled fair England down. <laughs> Government of Britain's Isle. What shall King Henry be a pupil still under the surly Gloucester's governess? Am I a queen in title and in style? And must be made a subject to a duke? I thought King Henry resembled me. Encourage courtship and proportion. But all his mind is bent to holiness, to number all your reeds on his beads, his champions of the prophets and the apostles, his weapons, holy stars of sacred writ, his study is his tilt yard, and his loves are brazen images of canonized saints. I would the college of cardinals would choose him pope and carry him to Rome and set the triple crown upon his head. That were a state fit for his holiness. Madam, be patient. As I was called your highness came to England, so will I in England work your grace's full content. Beside the haughty protector, have we both as the imperious churchman? Somerset, Warwick, and Grumbling York, and not the least of these, but can be more in England than the king. And this to me, although we fancy our cardinal, then must we join with him and with the lords until we have brought Duke Humphrey in disgrace. Then one by one we'll weave them all at last, and you yourself shall steer the happy hell. <laughs> himself in France, then let him be denied the regentship. If Somerset be unworthy of the place, let York be regent, I will yield unto him. Whether your grace be worthy, yea or no, dispute not that. York is the worthy. Ambitious Warwick, let thy betters speak. The cardinal's not my better in the field. In this presence, all are thy better. Peace, uncle. <laughs> and show some reason to us all why Somerset should be preferred in this. Because the king, forsooth, will have it so. Madam, the king is old enough himself to give his censure. These are no women's matters. <laughs> if he be old enough, what needs your grace to be protector of his excellence? Madam, I am protector of the realm. And at his pleasure will resign my place. Resign it then and leave that insolence. <laughs> Since thou wert king, and who is king but thou? The commonwealth had daily run to rack. The commons hast thou rack. The clergy's back are light and lean from thy extortion. Thy sumptuous buildings and thy wife's attire cost a massive public treasure. Thy state yeah, yeah, yeah. palaces and towns in France, if they were known as the suspect is great, would make thee quickly hop without thy head. <laughs> as for your spiteful, false objections, Prove them, and I lie open to the law. But God 
in mercy, so deal with my soul, as I, in duty, love my king and country. But to the matter that we have in hand, I say, my sovereign, York is meanest man, to be your regent in the realm of France. Before my collection, give me leave to show some reason of no little force, why York is most unmeet of any man. Now tell me, Suffolk, why I am unmeet first, for I cannot flatter thee in pride. <laughs> Next, if I be appointed to that place, my lord of Somerset will keep me here. Without discharge, my lord furniture shall France be one into the Dauphin's hat. Last time, I danced attendance on his will, till Paris was besieged, famished, and lost. That can I witness, and a of fact, did never traitor in the land commit. Peace and strong warning. Oh, it's a bright I should have hold my peace. All England knows thine insolence. And thy yeah. ambition, your I for thee peace, good queen, and wet not on these furious peers, for blessed are the peacemakers on the earth. Hmm. <laughs> good uncle, what shall we say to this? My lord, accept this verdict that I give. He is unworthy to have any voice. The Lady Eleanor. The protector's wife has practiced dangerously against your state. Dealing with witches and with conjurers. Whom we have apprehended in the fact. Raising up wicked spirits from underground. Demanding of your highness life and death. And other of your highness's privy council, as more large your grace shall understand. What mischiefs work the wicked ones? Keep any confusion on their own heads thereby. Gloucester, see here the tincture of thy nest, and look thyself be faultless, thou wert best. Madam? For myself to heaven I do appeal, but for my wife I, I know not how it stands. Sorry I am to hear what I have heard. Noble she is, but, but if she hath conversed with such as like to pitch, defile nobility, I banish her my bed and company, and give her as a prey to law and shame that hath dishonored Gloucester's honest name. I beseech your majesty, give me leave to go. Say, Humphrey, Duke of Gloucester, and thou go. Give up thy staff. Henry will to himself protect of thee. And God will be my hope, my stay, my guide, my lantern to my feet. And go in peace, Humphrey, no less beloved than, thou wert, than when thou wert protector to thy king. Give up your staff, sir, and the king his realm. Noble Henry is my staff. As willingly do I the same reside as erst thy father Henry made it mine. And even as willing at thy feet I leave it as others would ambitiously receive it. Farewell, good king. When I am dead and gone, may honorable peace attend my throne. I know he's Henry King, and Margaret Queen, and the Humphrey Duke of Gloucester scarce himself. Let's look into this business thoroughly, and call these foul offenders to their answers. Go, let's our uncle that friend to this. Let's poise the cause of justice equal scales, whose beams stand sure, whose rightful cause prevail. Can you not see, or will you not observe, how insolent of late he has become, disdaining the duty that to us belongs? Small curs are not regarded when they grin, but great men tremble when the lion roars. And Humphrey is no little man in England. First note that he is near you in descent, and should you fall, he is next will mount. By flattery hath he won the commons' hearts, and when he pleased to make commotion, tis to be feared they all will follow him. Now tis the spring, and weeds are shallow-rooted. Suffer them now, and they'll all grow the garden and choke the herbs for want of husbandry. My lords of Suffolk, Winchester, and York, reprove my allegation if you can, or else conclude my words effectual. Well, if your highness seen into this duke, and had I first been put to speak my mind, I think I should have told your grace's tale. Smooth runs the water where the brook is deep, and in his simple show he harbors treason. Indeed, my sovereign, Gloucester is a man, unsound yet and full of deep deceit. My lords, at once, the care you have of us to mow down thorns that would annoy our foot is worthy praise. But should I speak my conscience? 
Our kinsman Gloucester is as innocent from meaning treason to our royal person as is the suckling lamb or harmless dove. Uh, what's more dangerous than this fond defiance? Seems he had done, his feathers are but borrowed. Take heed, my lord, the welfare of us all hangs on the cutting short that fraudful man. All happiness is my lord the king. Pardon my liege that I have stayed so long. Nay, Gloucester, know that thou art come too soon, unless thou art more loyal than thou art. I do what I see of my treason here. So this duke, thou shalt not see me thus. Who is can accuse me? Wherein am I guilty? Desert, my lord, that you took rights of France and bade protect us of the soldier's pay by means whereof his highness hath lost France. Is it but not so? What are they that think it? I never robbed the soldiers of their pay. No, never had one penny bribed from France that coin that e'er I hold it to my use be brought against me at the judgment day. In your protectorship, you did devise special tortures for offenders. Never heard of. But England was defamed by hearing it. It is well known that was I was protector, pity was all the fault that was in me. So help me God as I watched the night. By night by night in studying good for England. My lord, these faults are easy, quickly answered, but mightier crimes are laid into your charge where you cannot easily purge yourself. I do arrest thee in his highest name, and here commit you to my good lord cardinal, to keep until the further time of trial. My lord of Gloucester, it's my special hope that you will clear yourself of all suspect. My conscience tells me you are innocent. But my lord, these days are dangerous. Virtue is choked with foul ambition, and charity chased hence with rancor's hand. Foul subornation is predominant, and equity exiled your highness land. I know their comp plot is to have my life. And if my death might make this island happy and, and prove the period of their tyranny, I would expend it with all willingness. But by this made the prologue to their play. The thousands more that yet suspect no peril will not conclude their plotted tragedy. Beaufort's red, sparkling eyes blab his heart's malice. In Suffolk's cloudy brow, his stormy hate, the sharp Somerset unburdened with his tongue, the envious load that lies upon his heart. And dog of York, his arm I have plucked back by false accused doth level at my life. And you, my sovereign lady with the rest. My false accuse doth level in my life, and with all thy best endeavor doth stir up my leafest liege to be my enemy. I all of you have laid your heads together, and all to make away my guiltless life. My liege is really is intolerable. Have you not what a sovereign lady do with ignominious words that clerkly couch? What I can give the loser leave to chide. <laughs> Far truer spoke than meant, I lose indeed. Beshrew the winners, for they played me false. He'll rest the sense and hold us here all day. Lord Cardinal, he is your prisoner. Sir, attend the duke. God him sure. For thus King Henry throws away his crutch, before his legs be thrown to bear his body, as is the shepherd beaten from thy side, and wolves of Norland, who shall know thee first? All oh, that my fears were false, all oh, that they were, from good King Henry, thy decay I fear. My lord, with your wisdom see it best, do or undo as it are so. What with your highness leave the pardon? Nay, Barbara, and thy heart is bound with grief. Oh, Uncle Humphrey, in my face I see the map of honor, truth, and loyalty. And yet, Uncle Humphrey, is thou to come there ere I prove thee false or in thy faith? What lowering star! Now envies thy estate of these great lords, and Margaret, our queen, who sits a virgin on thy harmless life. Not that it is the wrong, nor no man wrong. But as the butcher takes away the calf, and binds the wretch, and beats it where it strains, bearing it to the bloody slaughterhouse, even so remorseless have they borne him hence. And as the dam runs lowing up and down, Looking the way for harmless loved one when and can you not but wail for darling's lost? Even so, myself bewails good Gloucester's case with sad, unhelpful tears. And with the advice which I can give, and cannot do him good, so mighty are his valid enemies. His fortunes I will weep, 
and twixt each groan, say, who's a traitor? Gloucester, he is not. Three lords, cold snow melts with the sun's hot beams. Henry, my lord, is cold in great affairs, too full of foolish pity. Believe me, lords, this Gloucester should be quickly rid the world to rid us from the fear we have of him. That he should die is worthy policy, but yet we want a color for his death. It is meet that he be condemned by force of law. But in my mind, there were no policy. The king will end still to save his life. The commons happily rise to save his life. So do not stand on quillets how to slay him, be it by gins, by snares, by subtlety, sleeping away he lives in my house, or he be dead. His resolutely spoke, not resolutely except so much were done, he say, but the word, and I will be his priest. <laughs> I would rather he be dead on sir, ere they can take due orders for a priest. <laughs> say you consent, and set you well. Biddy, and I will provide his executioner. I so tender for the safety of my mind. Here is my hand that these worthy doing, and so say I. And I, and now we three have spoke it. It scales not greatly who impugns our doom. Great urge from Ireland and my comrade to signify the rebels that are old and put the Englishman under the sword. Send suckers for us to separate me time. A priest that craves a quick expedience, not my lord of York. Try what your fortune is. To Ireland will you take a group of men and tie your hat against the Irishman? I <laughs> will, my lord, so please his majesty. Why, our authority is his consent, and what will you establish he confirms. Now, noble lord of York, take thou this task in hand, but return me to the false to comfort. No more of you, for I will deal with it. Henceforth he will trouble us no more. My lord of Suffolk, within fourteen days at Bristol, I expect my soldiers. From there I'll ship them all to Ireland. See it truly done, my lord of York. Now York or never be as thou hopes to be! Well, no world's well! Tis politically done to send me packing with an host of men, twas men I lacked, and you will give them me. <laughs> I take it kindly. <laughs> Yet be well assured, you put sharp weapons in a madman's hand. Was I Ireland nurse a mighty band, I will stir up in England some black force, shall blow ten thousand souls to heaven or hell, and this fell tempest shall not cease rage, and shall that golden crown sit on my head. And you're a minister of my intent, I have seduced a headstrong Kentish, John Cage of um, Ashford, to make commotion. As well he can, under the title of John Mortimer, by this I can perceive the common's mind how they affect the house and claim of York. Say that he be taken, racked, and tortured. I know the pain they can inflict upon him, or they can say I have moved him to those arms. I say that he cry, as tis great like he may. Why then from Ireland come I with my strength? And reap the harvest which that coistral sowed for hungry being dead as he shall be. And Henry put aside the rest for me.
call them presently, men of the Lord. Lords, take your places, and I pray you all proceed no straight against our Uncle Gloucester, and from true evidence of good esteem, he be approved in practice. Oh, pray God he may quit him on suspicion. Oh, thank you, man. These words can thank you much. Oh, no. What's so pale? Why trembles thou? What's the matter, Stockwick? Where is our uncle? Dead in his head, my lord Gloucester is dead. Mary God forfend. God's secret judgment. I did dream tonight that the Duke was dumb and could not speak a word. Help us, my lord! Help us! The king is dead! Run go help out! Oh, Henry, oh, open my eyes! He does survive again, madam, be patient. Oh, oh my god, help us, my gracious lord! Comfort my sovereign, gracious Henry, comfort me! Well, no, 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 comfort me! Came he right now to sing a raven's note? Whose dismal tune bereft my vital powers, and thinks he that the chirping of a wren by cry and comfort from a hollow breast can chase away the first conceived sound? I'm not thy poison with such sugared words. <laughs> Do lay down thy hands on me, for dare I say, thy touch upbraids me as a serpent's sting. Thou baleful messenger out of my sight! Why do you rage, my lord of Suffolk, thus? Although the Duke was enemy to him, yet he most Christian-like laments his death. What know I how the world may deem of me? For it is known we were but hollow friends. It may be judged I made the Duke away. Oh, woe was me for Gloucester, wretched man. Be woe for me, more wretched than he is. What dost thou turn away and eye thy face? I am no loathsome leper, look on me. Is all thy comfort shut in Gloucester's tomb? Why then Queen Margaret was ne'er thy joy. It is reported, mighty sovereign, that good Duke Humphrey traitorously is murdered by Suffolk and the Cardinal Beaufort's means. The commons, like an angry hive of bees that want their leader, scatter up and down and care not where they sting in his revenge. Myself have calmed their spleenful mutiny until they hear the order of his death. He is dead, good lord, tis too true, but how he died, God knows, not Henry. Enter his chamber, view his breathless corpse, and comment then upon his sudden death. That shall I do, my liege. Oh, thou that judgest all things, say my thought. My thoughts that labor to persuade my soul, some violent hand to lay on Humphrey's life. If my, mis if my suspecting pulse, forgive me, God, but judgment only that belong to me. Mm. Come hither, gracious sovereign. You this body. I just to see how deep my grave is made. O oh, witness soul, flooded all my earthly solace, and in seeing him I see my life in death. As surely as my soul intends to live, with that dread king who took our state upon him to free us from his father's wrathful curse, I do believe that violent hands were laid upon the life of this thrice famous duke. A woeful oath swung with his solemn tongue. What incense needs Lord Warwick for this thou? See how his face is black and full of blood, his eyeballs further out than when he lived, staring, full, ghastly, like a strangled man. His hair upreared, his nostrils stretched with struggling, his hands abroad displayed, as though they grasped and tugged for life, and were by strength subdued, it cannot be, but he was murdered here. Why, Warwick, who would do the Duke to death? Myself and both would have me protection, and he, I hope, sirs, are no murderers. If both of you were vowed to Humphrey's boat, and you were soon after the Duke to keep. His life you would not beast him like a friend, and tis well seen he found an enemy. And you would like suspect these noblemen is guilty of Duke Humphrey's timeless death? <coughs> Who finds the heifer dead and bleeding fresh, and sees fast past the butcher with an axe, but what suspect was he that made the slaughter? Are you the butcher, Suffolk? Where's your knife? Let him be still. With reverence, may I say? For every word you say in his behalf is slander to your royal dignity. I wear a knife to slaughter sleeping men. But here's a vengeful sword rusted with ease that shall be scoured in his rancorous heart that slanders me with murder screams and bad. <laughs> Say it thou this, but a war of Warwick shall that fall thee into Humphrey's death. Oh, what dares not Warwick if false Suffolk dare him? Pernicious bloodsucker of sleeping men! Why, how now, lords? Thou rightful weapon strong here in our presence, dare you be so bold? Dread Lord, the commons send you word by me. Uh, unless Lord Suffolk straight be done to death, or banish fair England's territories, they will, by violence, tear him from your palace and torture him with grievous, lingering death. They say by him the good Duke Humphreys died. They say 
In him they do your highness dead. For sure, my sons do hourly prophesy this chance of my state by some means. And therefore, by his majesty I swear, whose far unworthy deputy I am, he shall not breathe infection in this air, but three days longer on the pain of death. Oh, Henry, let me plead for gentle suffering. Space thou dearest found, on any ground that I am ruler of, the world will not be ransom for thy life. What is what I say? Your Majesty, the Cardinal Bonfort is at point of death. For suddenly a grievous sickness took him that makes him gasp and stare and cuts the air, blaspheming God and cursing men on earth. Sometimes he talks as if to come his ghost were by his side. Sometimes he calls your highness and whispers to his pillow as to you the secrets of his overcharged soul. Even now he calls aloud to you. Uh, come, Somerset, more, come with me. This chance and sorrow go along with you. Our discontented sorrow that should be played out of the keep you suffer. Cease, gentle queen's execration. Let us suffer take his head to me. Give me thy hand, that I may do it with my wonderful tears. Nor let the rain of heaven wet this place to wash away my woeful body. Now get me gone, that I may know my grief. Tis but surmise whilst thou art standing by. Oh, go not yet. Means your friends thus condemned embrace. And kiss and take ten thousand leagues, or a hundred times to fight the die. You now go well and bear a life with me. Thus is poor Suffolk ten times vanishing, once by the king and three times thrice by me. Tis not the land that I care for, wert thou then so wilderness would be populous enough, so Suffolk had thy heavenly company. But where thou art, there is the world itself. And where thou art not, the desolation I can no more. Live thou to joy thy life, myself no joy not, but that thou live. Now guess ye, hence the king thou knowest is coming. If thou be found by me, thou art but dead. I depart from thee, I cannot live. Oh, let me stay before what me before. Friend, sweet Suffolk. Let me hear from thee. For whensoever thou art in this world's globe, thou will have an iris that shall find thee out. Take thou. to the woefulest task that ever did contain his own word. He has a slitted box so sunder we. This way for life to death, and this way for me.
I will give thee England's treasure, enough to purchase such another island, if thou wilt just let me live and feel no pain. How dare is my lord speak all the time? What a sign that this evil life with us, which it seems so terrible. Of course, it is thy sovereign speaks to thee. Take me to thy trial and escape. I need not in his bed, or should he die? Can I make men lift when they will or not? I can't uh, torture me no more. I will confess alive, alive again. He has no eyes. The dust that blinded them. Look at his hair. Look at him. It stands up like live twigs set to catch my wicked soul. Do make him grin. Disturb him not. Let him pass peaceably. Look, Colonel, if thou lookst on heaven's bliss, hold up thy hand, make signal of thy hope. He dies the next day's time. Oh, God forgive me. So bad a death argues a monstrous life, obey the judge. For we are sinners all, and let us all to meditation. Seven 
half penny loaves sold for a penny. <laughs> the three hoops pot shall have ten hoops. <laughs> and I will make it felony to drink small beer. <laughs> All the realm shall be in common. And in Cheapside shall my palfrey go to grass. And when I am king, where's king I will be? Thank you, good people. There shall be no money. All shall eat and drink on my school. And I will apparel them all in one livery that they may agree like brothers. And worship me then. <laughs> But 
protector over it. And from now on, we'll have the Lord say his hand for the selling of the Duke of Maine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is England named and fame to go with the staff, but that my puissance holds it up? <laughs> 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 I say to you that that Lord Say had gelded the Commonwealth oh, and yeah. made it a eunuch. Oh. And more than that, he can speak French. Oh. Oh. I'll send some holy bishop to entreat 
For God forbid so many simple souls should perish by the sword, and I myself, rather than bloody war, should cut them short, will parley with Jack Cain, their general. You will say, Jack Cain, that's one to have thy head. Aye, but I hope your highness shall have his. <clears throat> How now, madam? Still lamenting and mourning for some extent? I fear me, love, if that I had been dead, thou wouldst not have looked mourned so much for me. No, my love, I should not mourn, but thine to thee. Oh, 
I sold not Lane. I lost not Normandy. But to recover them would lose my life. Justice with favor have I always done. Prayers and tears have moved me. Gifts could never. What have I ought exacted at your hands but to maintain the king, the realm, and you? His cheeks are pale with watching for your good. Give him a box of the ears. That'll make him red again. <laughs> Staying in heavens, 
And on earth be witness that no want of resolution in me, only that my father is base and ignominious treasons makes me betake me to my heels. Despite the devils in hell, and through the very midst of the earth! <laughs> what is he fled? Don't no summon follow him, and he that brings his head unto the king shall have as his rewards a thousand crowns. <laughs> Come, soldiers, follow me. Mobilize the means to reconcile you all unto the king. Tell. 
If not in heaven, you'll surely suffer in hell. Now, Lancaster, since you're my senior straight, yield up the crown unto the house of you! Seest thou in me? With thy brave bearing should I be in love, but that thou art so fast mine enemy. Nor should thy prowess want praise and esteem, but that tis shown ignobly and in treason. So let it help me now against thy sword, as I in justice and true right express it. My soul and body upon the action of both. <laughs> Oh, tell them what I did. 
Rich and all my sons have best deserved. What? Is your grace paid? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't God, we would have. It's not enough. Our foes are this time fled the officers and such repairing danger. I know our safety shall follow them. For as I hear, the king is fled to London to hold a present court of parliament. What says your warwick shall we after them? After the nay, before them if we can. Ah, now by my hand, lords, t'was a glorious day. St. Albans battle won by famous York shall be eternized from all days to come. Sound drums and trumpets, and to London all, and more such days as these to us befall. <laughs> Traitor to the crown. Exeter, thou art a traitor to the crown in following this usurping Henry. Whom should he follow but his natural king? Drew Clifford, and that's Richard, Duke of York. Shall you wish our title to the crown? What title hast thou, traitor to the crown? Thy father was as thou art, Duke of York. I am the son of Henry V, the fifth, that made the Dauphin and the French to stoop and seized upon his towns and provinces. Talk not of France. Sith thou hast lost it all. My title's good and better far than his. Prove it, Henry, and thou shalt be king. Our Henry the Fourth by conquest got the crown. Just by rebellion against his king. I don't know what to say, my title's weak. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, 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 Henry. Tell me, may not a king adopt an heir? What then? And if he may, then I am lawful king. For Richard, in the view of many lords, resigned the crown to Henry the Fourth, whose heir my father was, and I am his. He rose against him, being his sovereign, and made him to resign his crown before. King Henry, be thy title right or wrong, Lord Clifford vows to fight in thy defense. May the ground gape and swallow me alive, where I may kneel to him that slew my father. Do right unto this princely Duke of York, or I will fill the house with armed men, and over the chair where now he sits, right up his title with usurping blood. Hear me, Earl of Warwick, but one word. Let me for this my lifetime reign as king. Confirm <laughs> <laughs> the crown to me and to my heirs, and thou shalt reign in quiet whilst thou livest. <laughs> I'm content, Richard Plantagenet, enjoy the kingdom after my decease. What wrong this is unto the prince, your son. I go to tell the queen this news. Farewell, faint hearted and degenerate king, in whose cold blood no spark of honor binds. Exeter. Why should you sigh, my lord? Not for myself, Lord Warren, but my son, whom I unnaturally shall disinherit. But be it as it may, I here entail the crown to thee and to thine heirs forever, conditionally that here thou takes thy oath to cease the civil war, and whilst thou lives to honor me as thy king and sovereign. This oath I willingly take and will perform. Long live King Henry! Plantagenet, embrace him. And long live thou, and these thy forward sons. Now York and Lancaster are reconciled. Accursed be he who seeks to make them foes. I'm sorry, your friends. I'll do my castle. And I'll keep London with my soldiers. Here comes the queen who's looking to bring her anger. 
I'll steal away. Exodus the line. Then come up for me, I will follow thee. Patient little queen, and I will stay. Who can be patient in such extremes? Wretched man! Had I but died a mate and never seen thee, never born of thee, son, seeing thou hast proved so unnatural a father, hath he deserved to lose his birthright thus? Hadst thou but loved him half so well as I, or felt that pain which I did for him once, or noticed him as I did with my blood, thou wouldst have left thy dearest heart blood there, rather than have made that savage stoop thy heir, and disinherited thine only son! Both you cannot disinherit me! If you be king, why should not I succeed? Pardon me, Marvin, and pardon me, sweet son. The Earl of Warwick and the Duke enforced me! They enforced thee? Art thou king, and wilt be forced? Wretch! I shame to hear thee speak. Oh, had I been there, which am a silly woman, the soldiers should have tossed me on their pikes before I would have granted to that act. But thou preferrest thy life before thine honor. <clears throat> and seeing thou dost, I hear to force myself both from thy table, Henry, and thy bed, until that act of Parliament be repealed, whereby my son is disinherited. The northern lords that have forsworn <clears throat> thy colors will follow mine, if once they see them spread, and spread they shall be, to thy foul disgrace and utter ruin of the house of York. Thus do I leave thee. Come, son, let's away our armies ready. Come. Speak, my lady, you speak. Thou hast spoke too much already. Get thee gone! Gentle son Edward, thou wilt stay with me. I to be murdered by his enemy. When I return with victory from the field, I'll see your grace. Till then, I'll follow her. <laughs> Poor queen, how loved me unto her son, and made her break out into terms of rage. <laughs> Go, Exeter, and then treat us with these. And I, I hope shall reconcile you all. The orator, but I have reasons strong and forcible. What is your argument? Who began in fight? No quarrels, but a slight contention. About what? About the crown of England, which is yours. Mine, boy? Not still, King Henry. <laughs> your right depends not on his life or death. Now you are heir. That will enjoy it now by giving the house of Lancaster leave to, to breathe. It will outrun you, father, in the end. An oath that he should quietly reign. For a kingdom any oath may be broken. I break a thousand oaths to reign one year. No! God forbid your grace should be forsworn. I shall be if I claim by open war. I'll prove the contrary if you'll hear me speak. I can't not, boy, it is impossible. Uh, An oath is of no moment being not took before a true and lawful magistrate that hath authority over him that swears. Henry had none, but did usurp the place. Then seeing twas he that made you to depose, your oath, my lord, is vain, frivolous. <laughs> Therefore, to arms. Father, do but think how sweet a thing it is to wear a crown. Within whose circuit is Elysium and all that poets fame and bliss and joy. Why do we linger thus? I cannot rest until the white rose that I wear be dyed even in the lukewarm blood of Henry's heart. Richard, enough! I shall be king or die! The queen with all the earth and or northern earls and lords intend here to besiege you in your castle. <laughs> she is hard by with 20,000 men. So much for a simple Henry and his oaths, eh? I hear the drums. Let's set our men in order, and this you forth, and bid the battle straight. Five men to twenty. Though the odds be great, I doubt not of a noble victory. Many's a battle have I won in France, when as the enemy hath been ten to one. Why should I not now have the like success, hey? A woman's general. What should we fear? Ah! <laughs> Uh, see what bloody comfort comes, and whither shall I fly to escape his hand? 
Here is the brat of this accursed duke whose father slew my father. He shall die. <laughs> oh! Clifford, murder not this innocent child, lest thou be hated both of God and man. How now? Is he dead already? <laughs> <laughs> or is it fear that makes him close his eyes? I'll open them. Ah, uh, uh, get them, Give me with my sword. And now it's such a cruel, frightening look. That's sweet, Clifford. Can you speak before I die? I am too mean a subject for thy wrath. Be thou revenged on men, and let me live. In vain thou speakst, poor boy. My father's blood has stopped the passage where those words should enter. Ah, then let my father's blood open it again. He is a man, and Clifford cope with him. Had I thy brethren here, their lives in nine were not revenge sufficient for me. Oh, let me pray, Lord, if I had to pity, I pray. Sweet Clifford, pity me. To such pity as my weapons point towards. I never did thee harm. Why wilt thou slay me? Thy father slew my father, therefore die. Ha! Plantagenet, I come, Plantagenet. And this, thy son's blood cleaving to my blade, shall rust upon my weapon until thy blood, congealed with this, do make me wipe off both. Stand brave and fret that I may sing and dance. 
That would be he, I see, to make me sport. York cannot speak unless he wear a crown, a crown for York. And lords, bow low to him, hold you his hand, whilst I do set it on. I bet he says, now looks he like a king. I this is he that took King Henry's chair, and this is he was his adopted heir. But how is it that great Plantagenet is crowned so soon, and broke his solemn oath? As I bethink me, you should not be king till our King Henry had shook hands with death. Oh, tis a fault too, too unpardonable. Off with the crown, and with the crown in his head, whilst we breathe, take time to do him death. That is my office for my father's sake. Nay, stay. Let's hear the orisons he makes. She wolfeth thrives. No worse than wolves of France. <clears throat> How ill becomes it in my sex to triumph like an Amazonian trull upon their woes whom fortune captivates. But that thy face is visor, unchanging, made impudent with use of evil deeds, I would essay, proud queen, to make thee blush. Oh, Tiger's part wrapped in a woman's eye. How couldst thou drain the lifeblood of the boy? Bid the father wipe his tears with all, and yet be seen to bear a woman's face. Women, soft, mild, pitiful, flexible now. Stern, obdurate, flinty, rough, remorseless. Bid thou me rage, when I thou hast thy will. Wouldst have me weep, why now thou hast thy wish. These tears are my sweet Rutland's option for ease, and every drop cries vengeance for his death on thee, fell Clifford, and thee, false prince. Of his. The hungry cannibals would not have touched, would not have stained with blood. Go, oh, see, ruthless queen, a hapless father's tears. With this blood, I've stained the life of my sweet boy, and with my tears, I'd wash that blood away. Take thou the crown. With the crown, my curse, and then I need such comfort come to thee as I now reap at thy two cruel hands. Had you been slaughter man to all my kin, I should not for my life don't weep with him. What we being right, my lord of Exeter, think but upon the wrong ye did us all, and that will quickly dry thy melting tears. Is for my oath. Is for my father's death. And he here. You right have a gentle heart to give. When I get to mercy, Christ God, my soul for his to seek out thee. Off with his head and set it on York Gate, so York may overlook the town of York. <laughs> I wonder how our princely father escaped. 
or whether he escaped away or no. Had he been tamed, we should have heard the news. Had he been saved, we should have heard the news. How fares my brother? Why is he so sad? I cannot joy until I be resolved where our right valiant father has become. I saw him in the battle ringed about as is a bear encompassed round with dogs. Red and pinched a few and made them cry, the rest stand all aloof and bark at him. So fair, our father with his enemies, methinks tis prize enough to be his son. Then will mine eyes or do I see three sons, three glorious sons, each one a perfect son. See, see, they join him, embrace and seem to kiss as if they vowed some league and vile. This wondrous rain like he had never heard it of. I think it cites his brothers to the field, to we the sons of brave Plantagenet should overshine the earth as this the world of what e'er it bodes. Henceforth will I wear upon my targets three fair shining suns. But what art thou? Which every looks for tells some dreadful story hanging on my tongue. One that was woeful looker on when as the noble Duke of York was slain. Oh, speak no more. For I have heard too much. Say how he died, for I will hear it all. Environed it he was with many foes, but only slaughtered by the ireful arm of unrelenting Clifford and the Queen, who crowned the gracious Duke in high despite, laughed in his face, and when with grief he wept, the ruthless Queen gave him to dry his napkin, steep it in the harmless blood of sweet young Rutland, my rock clifford slain! And after many scorns, many foul taunts, they took his head, and on the gates of York they set the same. And there it doth remain. Oh, Clifford! Boisterous Clifford! I was slain the flower of your the his chivalry. Never, never shall I see more joy. I cannot weep, for all my body's moisture scarce serves to quench my furnace burning heart. To weep is to make less the death of grief. Tears then for pains, blows, and revenge for me, Richard. I bear thy name. I'll but, avenge thy death. But now, fair lords, what fares? What news abroad? God and Lord, the Duke of York is slain. Then days ago I brought these news and fears. And now I've come post haste to join with you, making a head to fight again. Attend me, lords! The proud insulting queen hath wrought the easy melting king like wax. He swore consent to your succession. His oath enrolled at the parliament. But now to London, Margaret has gone to frustrate both his oath and what beside they make against the house of Lancaster. Sophia, against her must we march. And once again, cry, charge upon our foes! Look for it! On my shoulder will I leave. The king of England shall thou be proclaimed. And every borough as we pass along. That stay we no longer dreaming of renown, but sound the trumpets and abide our task. And now, when dual arm is the same, the queen is coming with a priest of hope. My men in swords, brave warriors, let's away! Strike up drums! God! That's it, George! For us! Welcome, my lord, to this brave town of York. Yonder's the head with that arch enemy that sought to be encompassed with your crown. Doth not the object cheer your heart, my lord? To see the sight it irks my very soul. Oh, full revenge, dear God, does not my fault, for wittingly I am fringed in my vow. My gracious liege, this too much lenity and harmful pity must be laid aside. Ambitious York did level at my crown. He but a duke would have his son a king. Thou being king, blessed with a goodly son, didst yield to the disinherit him, which argued thee a most unloving father. Were it not pity that this goodly boy should lose his birthright by his father's fault, and long hereafter say unto his child what my great grandfather and grandsire got, my careless father fondly gave away. But Clifford, tell me, didst thou never hear that things ill got had ever bad success? I'll leave my son my virtuous deeds behind, and would my father have left me no more? Oh, cousin, you are. Thy best friends, and know, I would have grieved me that thy head is here. 
My lord, cheer up your spirits. Our foes are nigh. With soft courage, makes your followers faint. You promise neither to our forward son. Unsheathe your sword and dub him presently. Edward, kneel down. Edward Plantagenet, arise in night. And learn this lesson. Draw thy sword in right. My gracious father, by your kingly leave, I'll draw it as a parent to the crown, and in that quarrel, use it to the death. Why, that is spoken like a toward prince. Royal Commanders, be in readiness. For with a band of 30,000 men comes Warwick, backing Edward, Duke of York. And in towns as they do march along, proclaim him king, and many do fly to him. Array of battle, for they are at hand. I would your highness would depart the field. The queen hath best success when you are absent. Aye, good my lord, and leave us to our own That's my fortune too, therefore I'll stay. Be it with resolution, then, to fight. <laughs> Henry, wilt thou kneel for grace and set thy diadem upon my head, or bid the mortal fortune of the field? No rate thy minions, proud insulting boy. Becomes thee to be thus bold in terms before thy lawful sovereign and thy king. I am his king. He should bow his knee. I was adopted heir by his consent. Since when his oath is broke, for as I hear, you that are king, though he do wear the crown, and cause him by new act of parliament to blot our brother out and put his own son in! And reason too! Who should succeed the father but the son? Are you there, butcher? I cannot speak. I crook back. Here I stand to answer thee, or any he the proudest of thy swords. Twas you that slew your brother, was it not? I am old York, and yet. Not satisfied. God's sake, lords, give signal to the fight! Done, my lords, and hear me speed. Defy them then, or else hope close thy lips. I'm gonna give no limits to my tongue. I am a king and privileged to speak. My liege, the wound that bred this meeting here could not be cured, my lords, therefore be still. Since <laughs> thou deniest the gentle king to speak, sound trumpets, let our bloody colors wave, and either victory or else the grave. Say, Edward, no! Wrangling woman will no longer stay. These words shall cost ten thousand lives this day. Now, Clifford, single thee alone. Suppose this arm is for the Duke of York, and this for Robert, both bound to revenge. Now, Richard, I am with thee here alone. This is the hand that stabbed thy father, York, and here's the hand that slew thy brother, Rutley. And here's the heart that triumphs in their deaths, and cheers these hands that slew thy sire and brother to execute the like upon thyself. And so, have at thee. <laughs> like to the morning war, when dying clouds contend with morning light. What time the shepherd falling in his nails can neither call it for today nor night. Now, sways it this way, like a mighty sea forced by the tide to combat with the wind. Now, sways it that way like the self-same sea forced to retire by fury of the wind. Sometimes the flood prevails and then the wind. Now one the better, then another best, both tugging to the victim's breast to breast, yet neither conqueror nor conquerend. Such is the equal poise of this hell war. Put on the small pill of rice and lay down. To whom God will, there be the victory. Poor Margaret, my queen, and Clifford too, and chipping from the battle swearing both, they prosper the best of all what I meant. Uh, he thinks it were a happy life to be no better than a homely swain. Sit on a hill as I do now, carve out dials quaintly point by point thereby to see the minutes how they run. 
so many hours must I tend my flock? <laughs> so many hours must I take my rest? So many hours must I contemplate? So many hours must I sport myself? So many days my ewes have been with young? So many weeks and the poor fools will e'en so many years or I shall shear the fleece. So minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years passed over to the end and were created would bring white hairs unto a quiet grave. Ah, oh, what a life for it is! How sweet and lovely! Gives not the hawthorn bush a sweeter shade to shepherds lugging on their silly sheep than that for rich Embroidered canopy to kings that fear their subjects' treachery? Oh, yes, it doth. A thousand fold it doth. <laughs> and to conclude, the shepherd's holy curds, his cold, thin drink out of a leather bottle, his wanton sleep under a fresh tree's shade, all which secure and sweetly he enjoys, are far beyond the prince's delicate. His viand sparkling in a golden cup, his body couched in a curious bed when care, mistrust, and treason waits on him. There's a man who hand to hand in this fluid fight, maybe possessed of some sort of crown. Oh, those, thou that so stoutly hath resisted me. Give me thy gold, if thou hast any gold, for I have bought it with a hundred blows. Let me see, is this our foeman's face? Oh, who's this? Oh, God. Oh, no, no. It is my father's face. No, 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 no. It is mine only son. Oh, oh, boy, if thou hast any life in thee, throw up thine eye. Oh, every time we get in such a man. From London, by the king was I pressed forth. My father, being the Earl of Warwick's man, came on the part of York, pressed by his master. And I, who at his hands received my life, have by my hands of life reared him. What stratagems, how fell, how butcherly, how erroneous, mutinous, unnatural, this daily battle doth be. Oh, oh, oh. Thy father hath given me the fight too soon, and hath bereft thee of thy life too late. Pardon me, God, I knew not what I did. And pardon, Father, for I knew not thee. But my tears shall wipe away these bloody marks, and no more words till they have flowed their still. Pity spectacle. Oh, bloody times. While lions war and battle for their dens, young harmless lambs abide their enmity. Weep, wretched man. I'll aid thee tear for tear. And let our hearts and eyes, like civil war, be blind with tears and break or charge with grief. Oh, pity! Pity, gentle heaven, pity! The white rose and the red on his face, the fatal colors of our striving houses. Wither one rose and let the other flourish. If you can attend a thousand lives, much wither. Oh, my mother, her father's death. Take on with me, and ne'er be satisfied. How will my wife, for the slaughter of my son, shed seas of tears, and ne'er be satisfied? How will the country, for these woeful chances, mistake the king, and not be satisfied? Who has ever summoned so rude a father's death? Who has ever father so bemoan his son? Who has king, so grieved by subject's woe? I'll bury thee hence, where I may weep my fill, for I have murdered where I should not kill. I will bury thee hence, and let them fight that world. For I have murdered where I should not Sad hearted man, much overgone with care, here sits a king more woeful than you are. Fly, father, fly, for all your friends have fled! Now war rages like a chicken bull. Wait for death, and hold us in pursuit. Here it died, and lost at last and gave King Henry life. Oh, Lancaster, I fear thy overthrow more than my body's party with my soul. <laughs> the 
toes, merciless, and will not pity. For at the hands I have deserved no pity. Come, York, Richard, Warwick, and the rest. Have stab that father's face. See what my breast. Now breathe your lords, and smooth the frowns of war with peaceful looks. Some troops pursue the bloody-minded queen, but think we lords that Clifford fled with them. Uh, no, tis impossible he should escape. Your brother Richard marked him for the grave, and wheresoever he is, he's surely dead. And so is this which takes her heavy leave. Say where it is, and how the battle's ended, be friend or foe, let him be gently you. Provoke that doom of mercy for tis Clifford. Ha! Ah, we're not contented that he locked the bridge, and she would reverence when his leaves put forth, but set his murdering knife unto the roof from whence that tender spray did sweetly spring. I mean her princely father, Duke of York. Thou didst love York, and I am son of York. Thou pity, Scotland. I will pity thee. Uh, uh, Where's Captain Margaret to fit on From off the gates of York, fetch down the head, your father's head, which Clifford places there. Instead, whereof that this supply the role, measure for measure must be answered. Now to London, with triumphant march, there to be crowned in England's royal king. From whence shall Warwick cut the seat of France? And that's the lady born for thy queen, so shalt thou see you both these lands together. Even as thou shalt. Sweet work, let it be, for never shall I undertake a thing wherein thy counsel and consent is wanting. Richard, I will create thee Duke of Gloucester, George of Clarence, and Warwick, as ourself, shall do and undo as he pleaseth best. Let me be Duke of Clarence, George of Gloucester, for Gloucester's dukedom is too ominous. But that's a foolish observation, Richard. Be Duke of Gloucester. <laughs> now, to London! Receive these honors in possession! Now, Harry, England is no land of thine. Thy place is filled, thy scepter wrung from thee, thy balm washed off wherewith thou wast anointed. No bending knee will call thee Caesar now. No humble suitors press to speak for right. No, not a man comes for redress of thee, for how can I help them and not myself? My queen and son have gone to France for aid, and as I hear the great commanding Warwick, is that they're gone to crave the French king kissed her to wife for Edward, if this news be true. Poor queen and son, your labors are lost, for Warwick is a subtle orator, and Louis, a prince soon won with moving words. By this again, then Margaret may win him, for she's a woman, because he pity much. Ah, but she's come to beg Warwick to give. Say, what art thou that talkst of kings and queens? Mm, more than I seem, yeah, less than I was born to. Uh, men at least, for less I should not be, and men may speak of kings, why not I? Ay, but thou speakst as if thou wert a king. Oh, I so I mind. Oh, then that's enough. But if thou art a king, where is thy crown? My crown is my heart. It's on my head. Glad <laughs> <laughs> that you're dying over it. <laughs> See, my crown is so content. Crown is the seldom kings enjoy. Well, if you be a king, crowned with content, your crown contented you must be contented <laughs> to go along with us, for as we think, you are the king King Edward hath deposed. And we his subjects, sworn in our allegiance to apprehend you as his enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever sworn a broken oath? No, never such an oath. Nor will not now. Where were you when I was king of England? <laughs> <laughs> Here in this country where we now remain. I was anointed king at nine months old. And you have sworn two subjects unto me. And tell me then, have you not broken your oath? No. Uh, for we were subjects, but while we were king. Why am I dead? Do I not breathe a man? Simple man, you know not what you swear. Look, as 
I blow this feather from my face. And as the wind blows it to me again, and obeying with my wind when I do blow, and bowing to another when it blows, commanded always by the greater gust, such is the likeness of you common men. But, but do not break your oaths, for I'm that's in my mild and treaty will not make you guilty. I charge you in God's name and the king's to go with us unto the officers. In God's name lead your King's name be obeyed, and what God will let that your king perform, and what he will, I humbly yield unto. to resolve me now, and what your pleasure is shall satisfy me. <laughs> How many children hast thou, widow? Tell me. Three, my most gracious lord. You shall have four, and you'll be ruled by him. <laughs> For I pity they should lose their father's land. Be pitiful, dread lord, and grant it then. Lords, give us leave. I'll try this without his wit. <laughs> now, madam, tell me, do you love your children? I, for this dearly as I love myself. And would you not do much to do them good? Well, to do them good, I would sustain some harm. Then get your husband's lands to do them good. Therefore, I came unto your highness. I'll tell you about these lands to be got. So shall you bind me to your highness' service. What service will thou do me if I give them? What your grace commands. <laughs> that ah, rests in me to do. But you will take exceptions to my boon. No, my gracious lord, except I cannot do it. I, but thou canst do what I mean to ask. Why then, I will do what your grace commands. Why stops my lord? Shall I not hear my task? An easy task. It is but to love the king. Well, that's soon performed, because I am a subject. Well, then thy husband's lands, I freely give thee. Oh, I take my leave with many thousand thanks. I say thee. Tis the fruits of love I need. Tis the fruits of love I need, my loving leash. Aye, but I fear me in another sense. What love thinks thou I sue so much to get? My love to death, my humble thanks, my prayers, <laughs> that love that virtue makes and that virtue runs. No, by my troth, I did not mean such love. <laughs> <laughs> you mean as I thought you did. No, but now, you partly may oh. see my mind. My mind will never grant what I receive your highness aims at if I aim aright. To tell thee plain, I aim to lie with you. To tell you plain, I'd rather lie in prison. <laughs> <laughs> well then, thou shalt not have thy husband's land. Why then, mine honesty shall be my dowry, for by that loss I will not purchase the dowry. thy wrongs thy children, mighty. Herein, your highness wrongs both them and me. 
But mighty Lord, this merry inclination accords not with the sadness of my suit. Please you, dismiss me with either I or no. I, if thou wilt say I to my request, no, if thou dost say no to my demand. Then no, my lord. My suit is at an end. The widow likes him not. She knits her brow. He is the bluntest wooer in Christendom. <laughs> <laughs> One way or other, she shall be my love. Say that King Edward takes thee for his queen. Tis better said than done, my lord. I'm a subject fit to jest with all, but far unfit to be a sovereign. Sweet widow, by my state, I swear to thee, I speak no more than what my soul intends, and that is to enjoy thee for my love. And that is more than I will yield unto. I know I am too mean to be your queen, and yet too good to be your concubine. Cavil widow, I did mean my queen. So grieve your highness, my son should call you father. But no more than when my daughters call thee mother. Thou art a widow, and thou hast some children. And by God's mothers, I be but a bachelor, I have other son. <laughs> it is a happy thing to be the father unto many sons. But if answer no more, for thou shalt be my queen. Brothers, you knew what chat we two have had. The widow likes it not, for she looks very sad. <laughs> <laughs> you think it strange if I should marry her? <laughs> to who, my lord? When it comes to myself. <laughs> <laughs> that would be ten days' wonder at the least. Ten <laughs> longer than a wonder lasts. Right, so much is the wonder in extreme. Yes. Well, just on, I can tell you both. Her suit is granted for her husband's lands. My gracious lord, heavy thy foe is taken and brought his prisoner under my power of state. Go see that he be conveyed unto the tower, and go we by the set of man to Widow, go you not. Lords, use her honorably. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Edward will use women honorably. <laughs> Would he were wasted, marrow, bones and all, that from his loins no hopeful branch may spring. The cross me in the golden time I look for. And yet, between my soul's desire and me, the lustful Edward's title there is Clarence, Henry, and his son, young Edward, and all the unlooked for issue of their bodies. A cold premeditation for my purpose. Well, say there is no kingdom then for Richard. What other pleasures can the world afford? I'll make my heaven in a lady's lap. <laughs> deck my body with gay ornaments and rich sweet women with my words and looks. <laughs> <laughs> Miserable thoughts. And more unlikely than to accomplish twenty golden crowns why love forswore me in my mother's womb. And for I should not dabble in her soft laws, she did corrupt, frail nature with some bride, to straight my arm up like a withered shrub, to set an envious mountain on my back, to shake my legs of an unequal size, to disproportion me in every part like to a chaos or an unlike veil realm that bears no impression like the damn. And am I then a man to be beloved? Monstrous fault to harbor such a thought. Then, since this word affords no joy to me but to command, to check, to forbear such as are a better person than myself, I will make my head to dream on the crown. Once I live to account this world but hell until my misshaped trunk that bears this head be round and pale with gold. And yet, 
no matter how to get crowned. <laughs> For many lives stand between me and home, and I, like one lost in a thorny wood that rends the thorns and is rent with the thorns, seeking the way and straying from the way, not knowing how to find the open air, but toiling desperately to find it out, to permit myself to catch the English crown. And from that torment I will free myself or hew my way out with a bloody axe. Why, I can smile and murder whilst I smile. With <laughs> <laughs> my cheeks with artificial tears. And for my face, to all occasions, I can add colors to the chameleon, change shapes with Proteus for advantages, and track the murderous mocking belt to school. Can I do this? And can I get a crown? Tut, we're further off. I'll pluck it down. <laughs> Humbly to kiss your hand. 
with my tongue. Uh, the tower of the passions of my sovereign's heart, where fame, late entering, hath his heedful ears, hath placed thy beauty's image and thy virtue. King Louis and Lady Bonner, hear me speak before you answer Warwick. His demand springs not from Edward's well-meant honest love, but from deceit, bred by necessity. For how can tyrants safely govern home unless abroad they purchase great alliance? Oh, injurious Margaret. And why not queen? Because thy father Henry did usurp, and thou no more art prince than she is queen. Uh, queen Margaret, Prince Edward, and accept of our request to stand aside while I use further conference with Warwick. Let his grand boy's words bewitch him not. Not worry. Tell me, in upon thy conscience, is Edward thy true king? For I were loath to a link with him that were not lawful chosen. Thereon I pawn my credit and mine honor. But is he gracious in the people's eyes? Well, the more that Henry was unfortunate. Then further, all dissembling set aside, tell me for truth a measure of his love unto our sister Bona. Such it seems, as may be seem a monarch like himself. Myself have often heard him say and swear that this his love was an eternal plant, whereof its root was fixed in virtue's round, its leaves and fruit maintained with beauty's sun, exempt from envy, but not from disdain. Unless the Lady Bona quit his pain. Now, sister, let us hear your firm result. <laughs> your grant or your denial will be mine. Yet I confess that often there is this day when I have heard your king's deserts for accounting, my ear attempted judgment to desire. Then, uh, Warwick, thus. Our sister shall be Edward. Uh, draw near the Queen Margaret and uh, be a witness that Bona shall be wife to the English king. <laughs> the Edward will come to the English king to a single Warwick. It was I advised by this alliance to make void by suit before thy coming, knew he was Henry's friend. And still his friend to him and Margaret. Yet, if your title to the crown be me, as may appear by Edward's good success, that is but reason that I have been relieved from giving aid, which later promised said. <laughs> yet shall you have all kindness at my hand that your estate requires, and mine can be. Henry, having nothing, nothing can he lose. And as for you yourself, our quondam queen, you have a father able to maintain you in better toy you troubled him in France. Peace, impudent and shameless Warwick, peace. Proud setter up and puller down of kings. Oh, oh. I will not hence till with my talk and tears, both full of truth, I make King Louis behold thy sly conveyance and thy lord's false love. For both are birds of self same feather. My lord ambassador, this letter is for you. This from our king unto your majesty. <laughs> and madam, this for you from whom I know not. <laughs> <laughs> I like it well that our fair queen and mistress smiles at her news while Warwick frowns at his. Nay, Mark, fellow, we sent to see what nettled I know for the best. Yeah! Warwick! What thou, thy news? And yours, fair queen, mine, such as fell my heart, and none that holds joy. Mine full of sorrow and heart's discontent. What? Has your king married the Lady Grey? <laughs> and now, to choose your forgery and his, sends me a paper to persuade me patience? Is this the alliance that he seeks with France? Dare he presume to scorn us in this manner? I told your majesty as much before. This proveth Edward's love and Warwick's honesty. King Louis, I hear protest in sight of heaven that I am clear of this misdeed of Edward's. No more, my king, for he dishonors me. And to repair my honor lost for him, I here renounce him and return to Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Let former grudges pass, and henceforth I am thy true servitor. I will revenge his wrong to Lady Bonner, 
and replant Henry in his former state. Warwick, these words have turned my hate to love. <laughs> and I cry that I forget all thoughts. Enjoy it without becoming King Henry's friend. Not so much his friend, I, his unfeigned friend, that if King Louis vouchsafe to grant us some few chosen soldiers, I'll undertake to land them on our coast and force the tyrant from his seat by war. Yeah. Not his new made bride shall suffer him. Then he hangs messenger of returning post. And then false Edward, the supposed king, that rear France is sending over masters to rival it with him and his new bride. Thou seest what passed. Go fear thy king with all. Tell him in hopes he'll prove a widower shortly, I'll wear the willow garland for his sake. Tell him my morning weeds are laid aside, and I am ready to put armor on. Tell him from me that he hath done me wrong. And therefore I'll uncrown him ere it be long. Now, Warwick, thou and Exeter, with five thousand men, shall cross the seas and beat the false Edward of battle and advocation serves. This noble queen and prince shall follow with a fresh supply. If thou shalt go, but answer me one doubt. What? Pledge have we of thy firm loyalty. This shall assure my constant loyalty, that if the queen and the young prince agree, I'll join mine eldest daughter and my joy with him forth within holy wedlock bands. With all my heart, and thank you for your motion. Son Edward, she is fair and virtuous. And here to pledge my vow, I give my hand. I stay now, the soldiers shall be the leader. I long till Edward Forby was his chance for mocking marriage with a dame of France. <laughs> <laughs> Edward, his ambassador, but I return his sworn and mortal foe. Have he none else to make a stale but me? Then none but I shall turn his jest of sorrow. I was the chief that raised him to the crown, and I'll be chief to bring him down again. Not that I pity Henry's misery, but see revenge on Edward's mockery. Alas, you know, tis far from hence of France. How could he say to war and made return? Here comes the king and his well-chosen bride with her brother, the new promoted rivers. <laughs> Why stand you pensive, as if half malcontent? Oh, I do as well as Lewis of France, the Earl of Warwick, uh, who is so weak in courage and in judgment that they'll take no offense at our abuse. <laughs> Suppose they take offense without cause. They are but Louis and Warwick. I'm Edward, your king and Warwick, so must have my will. You shall have your will because our king. Yet hasty marriage, Seldom proveth well. And ye, <laughs> Brother Richard, are you offended too? Not I, no. God forbid, I should wish them pardon whom God hath joined together. Ah, and to a pity to sunder them that yoke so well together. Setting your scorns and your mislike aside, tell me some reason why the Lady Grey should not become my wife and England's queen. Then this is my opinion, that King Lewis becomes your enemy for mocking him about the marriage of Lady Bona. And Warwick, doing what you gave in charge, is now dishonored by this new marriage. What if both Lewis and Warwick be pleased by such invention as I can devise? Yet to have joined with France in such alliance would have more strengthened this our commonwealth, its foreign and sorrow than any homebred marriage. Why knows not Clarence that of itself England is safe, 
if true within itself. But the better when it is backed by France. Tis better using France than trusting. <laughs> Let us be backed with God and with the seas, which he hath given for fits impregnable. In them and in ourselves our safety lies. For this one speech, Lord Rivers, well deserved to have the air and daughter of Lord Scales. I would of that. It was my will and grant that for this once my will shall stand for law. And yet, methinks your grace hath not done well to give her to the brother of your bride. She better would have fitted me or Clarence. But in your bride you bury brotherhood. Alas, poor Clarence. Is it for a wife that thou art malcontent? <laughs> I will provide thee. In choosing for yourself, you have shown your judgment, which being shallow, you shall give me leave to play the broker on mine own behalf. And to that end, I shortly mind to leave you. Leave me or tie. Edward will be king, and I'm entitled to his brother's will. My lords, before it pleases his majesty to raise my state to the title of queen, do me but right, and you must all confess that I was not ignoble of descent, and merely that myself have had like fortune. So as this title honours both me and mine, so your dislikes to whom I would be pleasing doth cloud my joys with danger and with sorrow. What danger or what sorrow can befall thee? So long as Edward is thy constant friend, and their true sovereign whom they must obey, nay, who they shall obey, unless they seek for hatred at my hands. I hear, yet say not much, but think the more. Now, Brother of Clarence, what news from France? What answer makes King Louis unto our letters? Who tell false Edward, thy supposed king, that Louis of France is sending over maskers to revel with him and his new bride? Is Louis so brave, like he thinks me Henry? <laughs> but what said Warwick unto our, to our man? Warwick? Go tell him from me that he hath done me wrong. Therefore I'll uncrown him ere it be long. But that's the traitor breathe out so proud words. But I will arm me. Being thus forewarned, they shall have wars. I'm taking that presumption. But, but say, is Warwick friends with Margaret? Aye, gracious sovereign, they are so linked in friendship that young Prince Edward marries Warwick's daughter. We like the elder Clarence will have the younger. Now, brother king, Farewell, I'll set you fast, for I'll against to Warwick's other daughter, that though I want a kingdom, in a marriage, I may not prove inferior to yourself. You that love me and Warwick, follow me. <laughs> Yet are we armed against the worst. Now, brother, Richard, will you stand by us? Aye. In despite of all that shall withstand, by so then I am sure of victory. We'll march towards Warwick and his mates, for well, I wot Henry is no soldier. Ah, treacherous Clarence! How evil it beseems thee to flatter Henry and forsake thy brother. Now, therefore, march we hence and lose no hour till we meet Warwick and his foreign power. These news, I must confess, are full of grief. Yet, gracious, if so merry as you may, Warwick may lose as well as win the day. Till then, fair hope must hinder life's decay, and I'd have rather wean me from despair for love of Edward's offspring in my womb. I'll head back with him to a sanctuary to save at least the heir of Edward's right. There will I rest secure from force and fraud. Come, therefore, brother Rivers, let us fly. Warwick protects us, we are sure to die. Trust me, my lord. All hitherto goes well. See when George the Pirate sweeps along. Speak suddenly, my lord. Are we all friends? Fear not that, my lord. And welcome, Clarence. I hold it cowardice to rest distrustful where a noble heart hath fallen an open hand in sign of love. Well, I think that Clarence, Edward's brother, were but a fainted friend to our proceedings. But welcome, sweet Clarence. My daughter shall be thine.
spite. This scornful Edward come. Now, Warwick, put down you for grace. Call Edward King, and at his hands beg mercy, and we will pardon thee these outrages. <laughs> Nay, rather. Wilt thou draw thy forces hence? Confess who set thee up and pluck thee down. Call Warwick patron, and be penitent. And thou shalt still remain the Duke of York. I thought at least he would have said the king. Twas I that gave the kingdom to thy brother. But, weakling, Warwick takes his gift again. And Henry is my king, Warwick his subject. Yeah. Yeah. But Warwick's king is Edward's prisoner. In ten to one, you'll meet him in the tower. Come, Warwick, take the time, kneel down. Kneel down! I would rather chop this hand off at a blow, and with the other fling it at thy face, than bear so low a sail to strike the thee. And lo, where George of Clarence stands by me, with whom an upright zeal to right prevails more than the nature of a brother's love. Come, Clarence, come. Thou wilt if Warwick call. Come, Clarence, come. Thou wilt if Edward call. Father of Warwick, know you what this means. Look here. I throw my infamy at thee. I will not ruin aid my father's house, who gave his blood to line the stones together, and set up Lancaster like slow as thou, Warwick. That Clarence is so harsh, so blunt, unnatural, to bend the fatal instruments against his brother and his lawful king. Perhaps I will eject this holy oath to keep that oath with more impiety. I am so sorry at my trespass made that to deserve well at my brother's hands I here proclaim myself by mortal go. And so, proud hearted Warwick, I defy thee. Until my brothers turn my blushing cheeks, pardon me, Edward, I will make amends. And Richard, do not frown upon my faults, for I will henceforth be no more unconstant. Now more welcome, and ten times more beloved, than if thou never hadst deserved thy hate. Welcome, Clarence. This is brotherlike. O oh, passing traitor! Perjured and unjust! How can thee battle, Edward? If thou dares! Next week, Edward dares and leads the way. Lords, to the field, St. John! Oh, 
heaven's shows. I must give my body to the earth. These eyes are dimmed with death's black veil. I've been as piercing as the midday sun. The search to see the treasons of the world. Rickles in my brows were likened oft to king and sepulchres. For who is king? But I can take his grave. And who does smile when Warwick bent his brow? Oh, now my glory smears the dust and blood. My parts, my walks, my manners that I had. You did not forsake me, and of all my lands, there's nothing left me but the body's life. And literally as we can, it's a time we must. you all farewell to meet in heaven. Away! Away to meet the Queen's great power! Suspicious, threatening cloud, I mean, my lords. Those powers that the Queen hath raised in Gallia have arrived our coast, and as we hear, march on to fight with us. The Queen is valued 30,000 strong. If she have time to breathe, be well assured, her faction will be full as strong as ours. We are invited by our loving friends that they can hold their course for Tewkesbury. We'll be the straight. Glory, courage! Sure. How to redress their arms. And though unskillful, why not Ned and I for once allow the skillful pilot's charge? We will not from the helm to sit and weep, but keep our course. Though the rough winds say no, from shelves and rocks that threaten us with wreck. And what is Edward but a ruthless sea? What Clarence but a quicksand of deceit? And Richard, but a, a ragged, fatal rock. All these, the enemies to our poor bark. So you can swim, alas, it's on water. Tread on the sand, why there you quickly sink. Bestride the rock, the tide will wash you off. Or else you vanish, that's a threefold death. This speak, I lords, to let you understand, in case some one of you would fly from us, that there's no hope for mercy with the brothers, more than with ruthless waves, with sands. And rocks, my courage then, what cannot be avoided, toward childish weakness, to lament or fear. We think the woman of this valiant spirit should, if a coward heard her speak these words, infuse his breast with magnanimity, and make him naked for the man at arms. Yes. Prepare you, Lord, for Edward is at hand. I thought no less. It is his policy to haste us to find this unprovided. But he's perceived we are in readiness. Lords, knights, and gentlemen, Henry, your king his prisoner to the foe, his state usurped, his realm a slaughterhouse, his subjects slain, his statues cancelled and his treasures spent, and yonder is the wolf that makes this spoil. You fight in justice, then in God's name, lords, be valiant and give signal to the fight!
Brave citizens of Tewkesbury, brave followers, yonder stands the thorny wood, which by the heaven's assistance and your strength must by the roots be hewn up yet ere night. I need not add more fuel to your fire, for well I wot ye blaze to burn them out. Give signal to the fight and fight for us. <laughs> Royals. Edward, what satisfaction canst thou make for bearing arms, for stirring up my subjects, for all the trouble thou hast turned me to? Speak like a subject, proud and ambitious York. <laughs> <laughs> Suppose that I am in my father's mouth, resign thy chair, and where I stand, kneels thou whilst I propose the self same words as he was treated, thou wouldst have me answer to. Oh, that thy father had been so resolved. That you might still have worn the petticoats and ne'er have stolen the breach from Lancaster. Let us up fable in a winter's night. It's very fertile sorts not in this place. By heaven, brass, how plague you for that word. I that was born to be a plague to men. For God's sake, take away this captive skull. Nay, take away the skull and crook back, rabbit. Peace, willful boy, or I will charm your tongue. Untutored lad, thou art too mellow. I know my duty, you are all undutiful. Lascivious Edward and thou perjured George, and thou misshapen dick! <laughs> I tell you all, I am your better traitor than you are, and now you shut up my father's right and mine! No. <laughs> Take that, the likeness of this raver here! Sprawl thou? Take that! <laughs> Take my hand for twitting me with perjury! <laughs> And shall hold Richard hold. For we have done too much. Why should she live to fill the world with words? <laughs> what? Does she swoon? Thanks. Excuse me to the king, my brother. I'll hence to London on a serious matter. Ere you come there, be sure to hear some news. What? What? The tower. Ned, sweet Ned, speak to thy mother. Butchers and villains, bloody cannibals! How oh, sweet a plant of you untimely crop. You have no children, butchers! If you had, the thought of them would have stirred up remorse. But if you have a chance to have a child, look in his youth to have him so cut off as deathman. You have read this sweet young prince. Away with her. I charge you bear her hands to force. Nay, never bear me hence, dispatch me here. Here she thy sword, I'll pardon thee my death. What, wilt thou not? Then Clarence, Clarence, do it now! By hand I will not do thee so much. Do it, Clarence, do it! Three Clarence, do it! Thou hear me swear I would not do it! Why would thou use the supports where thyself? Twas in before, but now tis chairman. Oh, thou charge thee, bear her hence! Where's that hard favorite butcher? Richard, Richard, where art thou? Where's Richard gone? To London, all in post, and as I guess, to make a bloody supper of the tower. His son, if that thing comes in his head, will march hence, discharge the common sort with pay and thanks, and let's away to London, and see our gentle queen how well she fares. By this, I hope she had a son for us. So come to you and yours, as to this prince. No, no, Edward! Edward! No!
Sin to flatter good were little better. Good Gloucester and good devil were alike. But wherefore dost thou comest for my life? Thinkst thou I am an executioner? <laughs> A persecutor, I am sure thou art. If murdering innocence be executing, why then thou art an executioner? Thy son I killed for his presumption. Hast thou been killed when first thou didst presume? Thou hast not lived to kill a son of mine. And thus I prophesy that many a thousand that now mistrust no parcel of my fear, and many an old man's side, and many a widow's, and many an orphan's water standing eye, men for their sons, wives for their husbands, children for their parents' timeless death, shall rue the hour that Thy mother felt more than a mother's pain, and yet brought forth less than a mother's hope. To wit, an indigested and deformed lump, not like the fruit of such a goodly tree. Teeth had sound thy head when thou wast born, to sick up by thy cape to fight the world. And if the rest be true, or shy, prophet, in thy speech, to this, among the rest, was I ordained. I the much more slaughter after their uh, Oh God forgive my sins and pardon me. Uh. What? Will the aspiring blood of Lancaster sink in the ground? I thought it would have mounted. Oh see how my sword weeps for the poor king's death. May such purple tears always be shed from those that was the downfall of our house. If any spark of life be yet remaining, down, down to hell, and say, I sent thee thither. I that have neither pity, love, nor fear. Indeed, tis true that heaven told me of. For I have often heard my mother say, I came into this world with my legs forward. Had I that reason to you, to make haste and seek their ruin that usurped our right? The midwife wondered, and the women cried, Oh, Jesus bless us, he is born with teeth. And so I was. Reflaining signified that I should snarl and bite and play the dog. And since the heavens have shaped my body so, let hell may crooked my mind to answer. I have no brother, I like no brother. And this word love, which gravely is called divine, be resident in men like one another, and not in me. I am myself a lump. King Henry and the prince, the son of God. Clarence, thy turn is next. Then the rest, I counted myself but back till I be best. I'll throw thy body in another room, and triumph, Henry, in thy day of doom. Thee, 
thy uncles <laughs> and myself have in our armour watched the winter's night, gone all afoot in summer's scolding heats, that thou mightst repossess the crown in peace, and of our labours thou shalt reap the gain. I'll blast his harvest ere his corn be ripe. Ghost of Clarence, love my lovely queen, and kiss thy princely nephew, brothers both. Thy duty that I owe unto your grace, I seal upon the lips of this sweet day. Thanks, noble brother, worthy Clarence, thanks. And that I love the tree from whence thou sprang'st. Witness the loving kiss I give the fruit. To say the truth, so Judas kissed his master. <laughs> by all hail, as he meant all harm. Now are we seeking as our sole delight, having our country's peace and brother's love. What will your grace have done with Margaret? Away then. What her heads to France. <laughs> <laughs> and now what less but that we spend the time with saintly triumphs, mirthful comic shows, such as befits the pleasure of the court. Strike up drums and trumpets! 